Hi there, it's Lukas for the Tech Travel Geeks, and this is the setup and software experience video for the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11. We've just released our unboxing video the other day, so if you haven't already, make sure to check it out, but today we'll discuss all things software. For the setup, I'll be using the SIM ejector tool which came with the phone, as well as a 16GB microSD card from SanDisk, as well as my spare SIM card, which I've just moved from the Poco M4 Pro 5G, expect the review video coming out really soon. If you're following along, make sure to also have your Wi-Fi and Google passwords handy. The SIM tray is on the left hand side of the phone, so let's take it out. It has two nano SIM slots, so if you want, you can use for example your work SIM card and a personal one, and both will be on standby at all times. However, please bear in mind that this phone doesn't support 5G connectivity, since the Snapdragon 680 chipset doesn't have a 5G radio built in. Let's start with the SD card first, or TF slash TransFlash as Xiaomi calls it here, which fits on the left. As per the tiny text at the top, it should face the screen with text upwards, so let's do that. As it turns out, I should go on a visit to an optometrist because I couldn't really read the tiny text and I thought that the first SIM slot was on the left. No, as you can easily see on the close-up, there's a 1 and 2 next to both slots, so unlike me, you should be using the middle slot. It doesn't really make a difference though, so let's go with it. As mentioned, it's now enough to slide the tray with both cards facing the screen. Just do it slowly to not drop the micro SD card like I did in my first take. Oopsie. And we can finally switch the phone on. As I mentioned in our unboxing, the screen is a 6.43 inch OLED screen, which is fantastic to see in a budget smartphone like this. It should have better blacks and contrast. The Mi on the screen refers to Mi UI, Xiaomi's version of Android. And the great news is that the phone is one of the few currently on MIUI 13, the latest version. I can't wait to test it out properly, so I'm really happy that I got my hands on it here. But let's get on with the setup. We start with the language, and it was correctly recognized as English UK, which is an improvement over the Poco M4 Pro 5G, which somehow pre-selected English US. Not sure if that's one of the bugs fixed with the MIUI 13, but it's a good start. All good with the region, set to the UK correctly. Then there's the usual terms and conditions, and since I've done it a lot in the past, I'll just agree, but feel free to read it all in your free time. The next step is to connect to Wi-Fi, which is when our Wi-Fi password comes in handy. It then asks you to wait a few minutes, but in my case it literally took 5 seconds, nice and smooth. We don't have a choice, either copy apps and data from your older devices, or not to do it. I always prefer to start fresh, so I decided not to copy anything. Less junk and old apps on my phone, and I always back up my photos with Google Photos anyway. Once the next screen loads, which in my case took 12 seconds, we can sign into Google, which will allow us not only to access the Gmail mailbox, but more importantly, to access the Google Play Store, where you can download all the apps from. If you have two-factor authentication enabled, and you definitely should, you'll get a notification to confirm that it's you signing in. I got mine on my Google Pixel 6 Pro. After a moment, you can configure different Google services like backup to Google Drive, use of location services, Wi-Fi scanning, data diagnostics, and automatic app updates. I just went with it all. At this point, you can either stop the setup and start using your phone, or just continue. I don't like leaving things unfinished, so let's continue. As with most Android phones, you can use the Google Assistant to control your phone or your smart home. Usually, when I set my other phones up, the system already remembered my voice, so I didn't have to teach it my speech patterns, but this time it asked me to say the magic phrase. However, for some reason, it still wasn't really recognizing my voice, despite me repeating the phrase loudly and multiple times. What's worse, I had two other phones on my desk, which all decided to listen in and talk back to me, so chaos ensued. I had to switch those phones off to continue. Interestingly, it still wasn't really working, so after a few attempts, I pressed the back button to get back to the setup, and we'll revisit Google Assistant later on. Back to where we were, and I was asked if I do want to continue with the setup or to leave. For some reason, the Google Assistant window appeared again, asking if I'm in, but after I confirmed, it just went to the next step. Never mind then. On this next screen, we can do a few things. Add another email, for example a work email if you need it. Change the font size for accessibility reasons. 
change the wallpapers or review additional apps. Let's check the wallpapers. There are 22 pre-installed wallpapers, so let's see what we have. Some are new to MIUI 13 by the looks of it, but I just went with my favorite beach photo. I just like it for some reason. Let's enable it as a wallpaper and the lock screen. We can always change it later. Back to the anything else screen, let's check the additional apps. And as usual, it's just Google Pay. Unfortunately, this phone doesn't have NFC enabled, so this app will be rather useless. But we can't disable it, so no changes here. And we're almost there. We can now enable security. At this stage, you can either go with just the screen lock or a fingerprint. I would strongly suggest going with fingerprint as the side mounted fingerprint scanners have been fantastic in past Xiaomi devices, so I'm expecting the same here. We still need to set some basic screen lock, so I just went with the pattern, but you can also go with a pin or a password, up to you. Once that's done, you need to configure your fingerprint. Just put your thumb on the power button and place it in different positions, slightly moving it up and down, to ensure that your entire thumb is scanned. For me, the good thing is that there's not much doubt. In 99% of cases, you'll be using the same finger, so the accuracy should be good. On the downside, if you're left-handed, it might not be as convenient, so bear that in mind. And we're done with the security for now. However, you can also add face unlock, which doesn't pop up during the setup, but you can add it afterwards. Then, we have to go through some Xiaomi settings. They're similar to the Google ones we did earlier, including location, data sharing, system updates, personalized apps and user experience program, but there's a new feature here, the wallpaper carousel. Future Me tells me that it displays a random wallpaper from their database, together with some interesting facts that you can read about if you click discover. I might switch it off later though, we'll see if it's useful. You can also select the default launcher, either the classic, where you have all the apps on your home screen, or the app drawer, when you need to swipe up to see them. I'm definitely an app drawer person, so I went with that option straight away. One thing I noticed is that I was never asked to log into my Xiaomi account, which used to happen in the past. You can still do it later, for example by going to the security app, doing the scan and enabling Xiaomi Cloud, which will sync your photos, contacts, etc. across your devices. I didn't go with it though, since I use Google Backup instead. And that's it apparently. The setup is complete and I'm ready to rock. Actually, between me pressing the next button and the phone fully loading, it took 47 seconds. But that's actually not too bad compared to other phones. Spoiler alert, the setup is not completely done, but we can start using the phone now, around 15 minutes after we started, which is not too bad. Once we're inside, we'll get some prompts, like the one about the control and notification center. Once you swipe down, if you do it from the right side, you'll get your control buttons, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, settings, brightness, etc. And when you swipe from the left, you'll get the notifications, like the one about the SD card being ready. Speaking of notifications, there's one about finishing the setup, which I mentioned earlier. It actually happens with all the Xiaomi phones I've used. However, there's usually not much happening, other than the getting your phone ready message, so let's just let it finish in the background and revisit it later. I actually checked it three minutes later, and it went really quickly. Ask me again if I wanted to copy anything from my account, which I declined again. Went through the account setup and voice assistant, without asking me to do anything this time for some reason, and showed me the anything else screen again, which I dismissed again. Once it was done, the setup was completed. There are two more things I mentioned earlier that I have to finish. The first is the Google Assistant setup. To do that, it was enough to say the wake up phrase, which then directed me to the setup again. It asked me if I wanted to use Google's voice match, which I agreed to, and luckily I didn't have to re-record my voice sample again, as it had it stored already. The phone also asked me if I wanted to store more of my voice samples, for example when I'm using search, assistant or maps, but I opted out of this for now. Finally, the aforementioned face unlock, which you can add by typing it in the settings search box. It will ask you to add your face data. But you should remember that this is less secure than the other methods, so the decision is up to you. The scanning process is really fast. Literally took a few seconds, and once you're done, you can unlock your screen by just looking at it. By default, it will open the lock screen and ask you to swipe up, but you can change that behavior by disabling the stay on lock screen after unlocking option. Much better. Let's look around a bit and go to settings. 
As you can see, we're indeed in MIUI 13.0.3, which is the stable global version of the software. We're on the December security update, which is not too bad at the beginning of February, just one month behind my Pixel 6 Pro. Looking at the storage, my phone came with 64GB, but 24.3GB is already used up by the operating system and some pre-installed apps. I was actually quite surprised that over 18GB is taken up by the system. That's definitely a lot. My Google Pixel 6 Pro reports just 1.1GB. But bear in mind that Google might manage or categorize the storage slightly differently potentially offloading some of the data to the apps section, which has apps like Google and Android system intelligence using up a few gigabytes themselves. Compared to some other Xiaomi phones, the Poco F3 and the Mi 11 Lite 5G use around 14 gigabytes on the system, while the Poco M4 Pro 5G, the older Redmi Note 10 Pro and my girlfriend's Poco F2 Pro are all around 13 gigabytes. All of those phones, however, are still on MIUI 12.5 so it looks like the newer version might be using a few gigabytes of storage more. Luckily, microSD cards are quite inexpensive, so we can always look into getting one of those to not feel too much storage anxiety. I'm always interested in checking the pre-installed apps, as Xiaomi usually install quite a few of those to start with. Luckily, it wasn't as bad this time. Other than Google apps and basic Xiaomi tools, we get AliExpress and Amazon for shopping, Amazon Music, Spotify and YouTube Music for audio, Netflix for video, Facebook, TikTok and LinkedIn for social media, and just one reference to a game. The PUBG gift box app, which allows you to download PUBG. It's good that the game doesn't come pre-installed since it's very big, so if you don't want to use it, you don't have to download it and use up the storage space. The fact that there are no games pre-installed is a major improvement over the Poco M4 Pro 5G, which I'm finishing reviewing right now and which had 6 random games pre-installed. What's more, you can always uninstall any of the apps. For example, I don't use LinkedIn that much, so it can get uninstalled by just holding your finger on the icon and pressing uninstall. Let's do the same with TikTok. Poof, and it's gone. The good thing is that I noticed fewer ads here. When opening the apps or games folders, I wasn't getting any app recommendations, Unlike some phones like the Mi 11 Lite 5G, which has download links and promoted apps in the games and more apps folders. However, my least favorite Xiaomi app is back. Every time you install a new app from the Play Store, a pop-up will appear which will confirm if the app is safe to use. And it will often show an ad as well, just like it did on other devices. Actually, I initially had a couple of instances when this didn't happen, but I had to change my initial draft of the script to say that my security app is back after all. Oh well. If you've seen any of our past phone setup videos for Xiaomi devices, you'll know we're big fans of how easy it is to configure different parts of the device. You can easily change the screen refresh rate, in this case you can choose between the default 60Hz or the smoother but more battery hungry 90Hz. You can also adjust the screen's color scheme, either to the default vivid, saturated or standard, but you can also change the color temperature and go for warm, cool or custom. I prefer default and vivid. I also enabled automatic screen rotation, as well as permanent dark mode, which is currently my preference, especially on this OLED screen. I also switched to gesture navigation instead of buttons after falling in love with it on Google Pixel 6 Pro. You can change it easily by searching for navigation in the settings app. You can also get a tutorial on how to use the gestures, so if you haven't used them before, I'd highly recommend doing that. You can also configure your SIM card and data preferences, but we might do a separate video about that in the near future. You can also change the theme of your phone with plenty of designs to pick from, either free or paid. Unfortunately, I encountered an issue with the first random theme I picked. When I pressed apply, I got a compatibility warning, suggesting that this is potentially not fully supported on MIUI 13 just yet. We'll see if that changes in the future. Speaking of MIUI 13, I can't say I noticed too many changes in my version of the software. The about phone screen looks very similar on 12.5, other than the logo. Not many changes in the photo app just yet either. 
I haven't noticed any new widgets compared to my POCO M4 Pro 5G. And the control panel still looks the same, with a single slider at the bottom for now and all the usual settings as expected. Hard to say about the improvements in the background, like liquid storage or atomized memory, as they're not easy to see, but I couldn't find the sidebar functionality available yet. However, as per the Redmi Note 11 series announcement, sidebar availability may vary by device and model, so we'll have to see if that gets released to this phone or not. I'm wondering if any of the changes are expected when this phone gets updated to Android 12 though, Maybe that's the reason why we're not saying as many changes in the software experience just yet. That's it for this walkthrough of the Xiaomi Redmi Note 11's phone setup and software experience. Hope you found it interesting and useful. Please let us know if we missed anything. We'll be looking at other features of this phone like camera quality, gaming performance and battery life in the coming weeks, so expect some further videos and comparisons to other similar devices and expect a long-term review in the future as well. To not miss those videos, make sure to subscribe to the Tech Travel Geeks and hit the notification bell to find out when they go live. But for now, thanks for watching.